are more than 20 years here in this building. It was 1988. The month was October. This building, it brings a lot of memories. I don't imagine myself going out of this. This is like a home. Rebecca Lanku lives in Fatis Mansion, one of the many abandoned buildings in central Johannesburg. The rundown building has no electricity or running water and is dangerous. 50% of households in the inner city earn below 3,200 rands a month and can't afford decent accommodation. My life here now is very pathetic. I'm staying with my husband. He is, in, he is an epileptic, so every now and then I must take him to hospital. How do I manage to take him downstairs? Because if I phone for an assistance, like um, ambulance, they tell me straight that we cannot get inside that dark place. Sometimes I cry alone. I just go to the toilet and cry because I don't want my husband to see. The Becca fears the city will evict residents and demolish the building. We don't break down buildings just for the fun of it because there's shortage of accommodation. But probably when they assess the building, it's not safe. Maybe there's structural damage to the building and therefore they have to tear it down. But even if it were to get to that stage, we would then do an assessment of the people who are in that building and then we would then be forced to provide alternative temporary accommodation. But the system is flawed. People are left in temporary accommodation for years where the living conditions are substandard. We are going to stay temporarily for almost 12 months. But to, to such an extent that we say, just stay here almost five years. The issue there was when we started responding to emergencies, we didn't have a model that we can use. So it was just a knee-jerk reaction, say let's find a building, put people so that people are not in the streets. The state has got fantastic big housing programs, including the big RDP program that is aimed at the poorest of the poor. But when we come to inner city locations and um, areas of, of high competition for land uh, and high value buildings uh, and high density kind of living, um, the state doesn't have a good solution in the housing program to try and meet the need. The city's housing department said it will invest 2 billion rand in the inner city over the next three years to address the increasing need of poor inner city residents. The, the responsibility for solving the problem isn't squarely uh, uh, in one person's lap and there isn't a clear way forward. And there should be. There should be far greater effort. It should be a massively urgent priority of the city and national and provincial government and all of us. These issues are priorities of the city. Every official who works in the city, particularly at senior levels, we are measured in terms of how much we contribute to ensuring that poor people come and live in the city. We're moving away from this concept that the inner city is not for the poor. The poor must remain marginalized and in the periphery of the city. We want to bring them in here. Josco alone is going to be uh, investing 211 0.5 million rand over the next 12 months in the inner city. There's not much information that is getting out about the other side of the story. The perception has started to grow that you have a municipal government that is sitting on its hands and doing nothing. I know that the opposite is true, that the stresses and pressures on city government to respond in higher volumes and at higher speeds to the need for more affordable accommodation is very, very real. But within the next 10 years when you come to Joburg, it will not be different to any first world city because we, we, we're really putting a lot of effort and energy into what we're doing.